Catherine, please. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, since the social media started to emerge uh, in the radar of the brand marketers in China a few years ago, sports and apparel brands apparently uh, have been among the savvy ones in understanding and, and exploring the usage of social media. I'm Elvin Chang uh, from Ren Ren. The M in my CMO title it's not just about marketing, but also about the monetization for Renren to generate, generate uh, advertising revenue. I'm very honored to be here uh, with my Renren partner, uh, a very beautiful lady and very senior marketer in the Greater China region uh, to share our views and experiences. So let me, uh, let's welcome Catherine Den, the CMO leading again. Yeah. Good morning. <clears throat> It's my privilege to attend this seminar, and when, she, when he say it's beautiful, I really expect there is applause. <laughs> yeah. So, so Catherine, uh, why don't you give us uh, the, the audience a little uh, brief introduction of Leaning, since I guess some of the audiences here are not very familiar with the Leaning brand. Yes. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Leaning actually is the first China sports brand founded in 1990. So now we have around 25 years of history, and Leaning was founded by. Uh, by a legendary and a very renowned athletes, uh, our chairman, Mr. Li Ning. So this, this company is named after his name. And Li Ning actually was, uh, was rated as the top and the most outstanding athletes in the 20th century. All his you know, 17 years of career life, he won more than 106 gold medals and the 14 world champions in gymnastic field. And uh, we are very happy that we are the very, very few sports brand who is funded by a real sportsman and a real um, gold medalist who is passionate to inspire people to achieve breakthrough and to fulfill their dreams by sports. Yeah, you know, in China, uh, there's a saying among the, the young consumers that if he want to be a proud na na nationalist, he has to own a pair of leaning brand shoes. Uh, yes, that's our as inspiration. But uh, I think that it's very challenging these days, particularly to attract the young generation. Yeah, so before uh, Kevin and I talk more about uh, Ren Ren and our partnership, we'd like to quickly touch upon the uh, social media landscape in China. Um, we all know that China is a very uh, large and more fragmented market. And um, in the social media realm, there are already uh, 300 million uh, social media users uh, uh, out of the total nearly uh, 600 million users. Uh, that, that is about half of the uh, online population in China. And to me, the three uh, major social media platforms are as such uh, Weibo, Renren, and WeChat. I understand that uh, the previous speakers might have touched about the, the the social media platform more or less, but you know, uh, I have been uh, very heavy, heavy users uh, due to work and also my personal interests. So I'd like to, you know, before I invite Catherine's uh, opinion on the social media platforms, I'd like to share my personal take on these three platforms. So WeChat, uh, we all know uh, in China is becoming very, very popular and it's uh, rapidly growing its user uh, purely from mobile. And to me, it's a very effective one-to-one, one-on-one uh, -on -one messaging tool where the brand messages are strictly confined within the sub subscription accounts, unfortunately. Uh, Weibo, to me, is more like a, a equivalent of Twitter in China, gradually added with so more social elements. Now injected with the e-commerce DNA, um, since it was invested by the e-commerce empire, the Alibaba group, a while ago. So the words about the brands still travel very fast, no matter they are good or bad ones. And Ren Ren, the company I've been working for, uh, have been pretty persistent on the real name registration, uh, which is not easy to operate in China. And we also focus on the one on everybody connecting and sharing. Yeah. Um, 
given the very fierce competition in China, we will, will uh, face very fierce uh, competition in China, not only in the internet industry, but also in other industries. Uh, Renren uh, managed to uh, grow our users and, and grow uh, state, stably uh, along the years. And I think the key reason is that we really, really focus on the, the young consumers, and I think this is also one user segment that uh, Lin uh, is, uh, care, cares about. Yeah, so um, I strongly believe that, you know, um, Ren Ren uh, is, you know, when it comes to real name social network, when it comes to young consumers, Ren Ren still is the best representative on social media. So um, this is my personal take. Uh, Catherine, uh, what would be your views toward these three uh, social uh, media platforms? Yeah, um, I think it's any brand. The most difficult thing is that we wanted to send the right messages to the right consumers. And we just <coughs> have to admit, I think even in China, given the control of the government, actually a lot of social network uh, may not be that familiar for people outside of China. They have their own so-called version of Facebook, but not exactly Facebook. Could be bigger than that or could be smaller than that. And I think in China, for the challenges we have, I think just like you know, uh, Jesse from MX mentioned, we cannot just only rely on one vehicle. Then we try to, to catch most of the people. That's not uh, realistic. And also the other thing is that consumer will get the source information. I think early days that we heard about to build the trust. I think they build the trust from different sources of information. So that's why actually for Lini, uh, we understand that to Royale on TV could, may not be the most sustainable way to attract consumers. So actually we invest a lot in digital media, particularly on social network. And I think our intention is that we try to connect with consumer at different touch points or uh, virtually to uh, give them information. So for example, like Weibo, Ren Ren, and WeChat, we actually um, leverage all three, but we may leverage all three to talk to one consumer or different consumer depending on their uh, motivation when they uh, stay online with this you know, group. So for example, like uh, Weibo, I know that it's a very effective tool to spread the news, to you know, quickly you know, share some of the so-called uh, corporate information or product information or any of the event information immediately on site. And also actually it's very effective as well. But actually most people will see Weibo more like a mini site or like a uh, news platform. You get information, but you don't have much discussion or comment, or you don't have much interaction with that. But you just see it as a very quick news feed to get the information you need. And for WeChat, I think it's a newly emerged media, and WeChat has been so popular in China. And I would just need to say is that if you want to do business in China, you cannot skip WeChat. And surely that WeChat is also the vehicle that a lot of, um, I would say a lot of agencies and uh, clients are working on what is the best way to use WeChat? Not only for you know, building the loyalty, building the CRM, but can we get more out of it? And I think talking about Ren Ren, uh, they do have some distinctiveness, which we see are very different from WeChat and uh, Weibo. Because Ren Ren is the only site actually you need to register with the real names. And one thing I like about Ren Ren is that they have been continuously to build and recruit young consumers into their platform. So they not only have the virtue, you know, um, similar type of Facebook, which you have the network, but they also go to schools on a, you know, on an annual basis. They, they connect with consumers also from the real experience. So it's not something like virtue, you don't know who they are. And I think for Ren Ren, the good thing is that we have been working with them for five years. And we also have a digital, a digital community, it's like a, we call Ren Ren Li Ning community uh, there for We're five years. We're going to talk about later. Yes, yeah. and that one actually can help us to you know, build not only the new recruit, but also to build the consumer loyalty. So that's something I would say that it all serves very different purposes. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Remember when we first met, you really compare Ren Ren to Facebook, and we talk about a lot of differences. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Uh, we would be really conscious about that question because that question is really frequently asked by especially the multinational uh, brands in China as well as the media journalists uh, sitting outside of China. So um, if you get a chance to use uh, Ren Ren, uh, you, you actually realize that these two social networks are not exactly the same. and um, you know, we, you know uh, along the years, we've been making a lot of efforts in trying to be different. 
and inno innovating learning uh, in our Chinese own way. So if I may, I'd like to elaborate uh, the, a little bit on, on this topic. So, you know, um, by, in terms of product, uh, so product-wise, uh, by nature, uh, many uh, real-name social networks uh, will, look, will look alike and that will appear on the product features. For example, the uh, real-name registration and the content generated uh, based on the real-life sharing. And we also have the social graph. Uh, so um, uh, take, uh, in, in Renren's case, the average uh, Renren users has average uh, 180 to 200 friends. I think that's uh, pretty similar uh, with Facebook. And uh, we also, you know, we understand that the most important uh, property on the social network is the personal profile page and the news feed triggered by the users. However, in terms of the monetization, <clears throat> uh, my observation in Facebook along the years is that they started out their uh, uh, re revenue generation from the uh, targeting ads that's more catering uh, to the small and medium enterprises, then expanded into the brand advertising territory, while Renren has been really, really focusing on the brand advertising territory. Why? Because we think the brand advertiser like Li Ning can pay premium price, you know, in contrast to uh, SME. And so, um, since there's a huge demand in the market from brand advertisers that they always want something different. They always want something more engaging and more innovative or something that other brands that have, haven't done before. So, you know, the following platforms and, uh, and solutions I'm going to show you is nothing like Facebook. Let me take a few for example. So this is the large, uh, very large banner on our login page, which is the largest banner probably across all the web in China. And, uh, you know, we have this uh, full page takeover, which can appear a little bit crazy. But don't worry, it's uh, initiated uh, by the users, so it's not that intrusive. Um, we can even retrieve the user's name and photo and put it onto a banner if the user happens to participate in the branded campaign and that will make the brand advertising content more relevant to the brands, to, to their friends. We, have the, we also have this uh, expandable social ad where it can accommodate simple interactivity that is supposed to happen on many sites. So that, that kind of uh, you know, shorten the, the, the funnel for the brand to interact with the users. And uh, this is another form of uh, expandable social ad. Uh, you know, once the user initiate uh, out of the social ad box, it can appear uh, a video ad where the users can, can like and comment and share with the friends. And we have this really customizable brand page where the masthead of the page can be played with a video or it can be added with some interactivity that is supposed to happen on the mini side as well. You know, uh, we also, we, we, we've been feeling the efforts in monetizing our mobile assets since 80% of our users uh, are accessing Zhenzhen through mobile now. So we, we're having this full screen uh, star page on our mobile asset. And we also embedded the voice feature, you know, into our user generated contents, whether it be status updates, comments, and photos, and the voice feature can be even leveraged by the brand. And you know, uh, we all know the photo is a very, very important asset for a real name <clears throat> social network. So we're about to try out this branded watermark that uh, can be put on photo. So is this something like Facebook? especially for you guys that are very familiar with uh, uh, the ad, uh, advertisement on Facebook. I don't think so. So the insights here, how can we come this far and become so different? I think it all comes with the unmet dem demands from the users as well as from the brand advertisers. And the, um, Chinese users are, are literally higher toleration uh, on ads 
you know, it's, it, this is true on internet, this is also true on the other traditional media like TV, lots of ad placements and, you know, there, there are a lot of clustered uh, uh, outdoor media. So, you know, thanks to uh, Chinese users, higher toler toleration. And secondly, the young people are likely to share fun and tricky stuff with their friends. Yeah. Uh, according to a survey, uh, the average Chinese users are, are twice as conversational and more engaging uh, than the, the Western users. And the third one is that you know, <clears throat> we aim to have more creative possibilities for brands to design the campaigns that can happen uh, on Ren Ren. So, um, Catherine, I understand that um, uh, Ren, uh, Li Ning has been emphasizing a lot on digital in your overall marketing strategy and social media uh, seemingly becoming more and more important. So, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the role that Ren Ren play in your overall digital strategy? Yeah, I think the most important thing is on the new user recruitment and also to stay connected with the young generation. As I just mentioned, that Leaning was a brand founded by a real athlete, and our chairman is already in his early 50s. So actually, we don't want a brand just to get aging because the chairman becomes old. So how can we transform the personality into the brand character? Yeah. And how do we keep recruiting people who may not know our chairman you know, before you know, he was born? So that's something actually very important. And I think that's why we feel uh, Ren Ren can help us, you know, to stay connected with the young generation with the very strong campus you know, recruitment activity you have from online and offline. Yeah, thanks for uh, Catherine's uh, explanation. So if I may, I'd like to add a few top line stats about Ren Ren. Uh, yeah, indeed, Ren Ren is, is, is still fairly strong in especially the young, cons uh, young consumer segments. And uh, currently we have uh, 280 million registered users where the monthly active users are over 110 million. As I mentioned earlier, 80% of our users are already accessing, you know, uh, Ren Ren through mobile, and uh, this trend will will only continue and and, and being uh, amplified. And um, yeah, that's about uh, some facts uh, on Ren Ren. So back to our uh, partnership, uh, you actually mentioned uh, a bit. Uh, that uh, we have uh, worked uh, together for over four years. But if I may, uh, uh, let me share with the audience that we, we actually have run 12 campaigns uh, together. That includes uh, four branding campaigns, four product launches, and four promotions. And uh, Li Ning started to set up the page back in 2009, and uh, so far uh, uh, the brand has accumulated up to 450,000 fans on Ren Ren. You know that is really large number even compared to the notable yeah, local no, and interview brands. Because I think the brands. Been larger than our Weibo site. And um, I think the beauty is that we really can get a lot of consumer insights and verbatim from the community, you know, from the, the words they gave it to us. And we also found out that for this community, people do stay. So actually, actually, 60% uh, of them are age 25 above. They may not exactly be the purpose for us to, you know, stay with Ren Ren, but I think we do see is that for people who stay with Ren Ren, they stay longer. And that's also one of the opportunity for us to build a brand loyalty. Thank you. And also besides, I, I don't want to compare the, 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 the fan base of different brands because it all comes with different purposes and efforts that every brand put into it is also different. But um, if we look longer term, if you want to look for uh, a longer relationship with the different social media platform, then the fan base is a really important foundation. And Catherine, uh, we, we, we've been talking about the, the uh, campaign that recently run uh, on Ren Ren, which is the Li Ning's 20th uh, anniversary that you also briefly mentioned. So uh, why don't we show the, the, the video of the campaign and we can talk a little bit yeah. more about, about it. Yeah, actually, um, I think this one is... Sorry. One the, uh, well, no. I, I think I'll just okay. keep talking. Uh, we just wanted to briefly show you a case that we have been running. And actually, this is part of the integrated campaign we run this summer. It's just to, you know, uh, to, as an anniversary of our first launch of the professional basketball shoes in China. So that is the 20th anniversary of that basketball shoes. And what we did is actually, we did a very big exhibition in summer in Beijing, 
in the Jiusanqi areas. And actually, we uh, display all the major product innovation and the major sports events in the past 20 years. And actually, the whole purpose is just to remind people you know, how sports change or transform your life in the past 20 years. Because Li Ning is the only brand in China which is the so-called heritage, heavily connected with the China sports industry as well as the Olympic glory. And I think we bring the whole idea uh, to the online execution by Renan. And I think the innovation here we create is really to create the timeline. So we will be able to, to connect with consumer they were even born before that 20 years. They are you know, only babies at that time. So we will be able to in integrate uh, your personal big events in the past 20 years through Ren Ren's you know, historical data. And we will be able to combine with the big events in the sports world, as well as China as a macro world. And the third one is that we will be able to incorporate into the brand major information in that past 20 years. So we make it a very personalized, you know, uh, personalized information for consumer, and then they will be able to share with their friends on their community. And the other part is that we actually want it to be more, more forward looking. So we also encourage a lot of you know, consumers feedback on what is the next 20 years you want sports to become, or what is the next 20 years you want life to become. And actually we receive a lot of very good verbatim. And this activity is still going on. It will you know, only be completed by end September. And we believe by then, we will be able to get a lot of very valuable consumer insight from the statement they, uh, they share with us. And also the result has been tremendously well. Only four days, actually, we have already received you know, more than 20,000 people registered on this event. Wow. And that impacts yeah. more than 5 million people. So we believe this is a very good uh, execution of an uh, integrated campaign to combine with online, offline, and also to meet different purposes. Yeah, I'd like to quickly add something on the digital front. So the campaign on, uh, of the Linux campaign on Ren Ren is essentially a seamless integration of the uh, Linux's uh, 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 defining moments uh, in the past 20 years and what has uh, the major events uh, that happened in China along with the use, uh, the timeline of the user who participated in the campaign. So I actually checked the results. Uh, if we use the query, uh, we uh, we search the curry with Yundong uh, Gai Sports Can Change Life, which is part of the tagline tech of the campaign. We realized, find the 50 pages of the, uh, of the content that generated by the user who participated in the campaign, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah, so, um, so, so not only uh, Li Ning, but uh, many other brands who, who come to us will seek some creative ideas along with their agencies. Uh, because um, you know, in China, uh, a, 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 um, a lot of, I'm not talking about Ogilvy, but uh, a lot more less digitally, less digitally savvy agencies uh, do not really uh, get the digital or social rights. So you know, the brands uh, will come to us to seek uh, creative ideas. And, and this is a really strong driving force for us to keep innovating by ourselves. And as I mentioned earlier, mobile is a huge trend and we're seeing a rapid shift from uh, PC to mobile in terms of user behavior. So um, let, why, 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 don't, why don't we show you another case that uh, how we innovate ourselves by bringing in a cross-screen integration. It's a very short one, one minute video. Please play the video. Uh, this is a, a culinary run campaign on Ren Ren by Dell. Yeah, just a few words about the campaign. Um, this is uh, a Dell's campaign culinary run on Ren Ren uh, that's promoting its latest uh, upgraded laptop with touch panel. Uh, with up to 10 uh, uh, touch point fingers. And, uh, this is, and we propose this uh, mobile uh, and, and PC integrated idea to, to the brand because they, they want to appear uh, uh, cutting edge uh, in front of users 
and uh, so far they love it. Uh, so I, I know Thomas is standing here to remind me that time is up, and I'm going to skip one last case, but I'll leave it to uh, the, 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 the Renren's uh, uh, workshop tomorrow where I, uh, I'll share more uh, 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 award-winning cases from Khan's lines uh, since fortunately I was uh, selected as one uh, cyber juror earlier this year. But the last piece we want to give to the audience is uh, uh, high new standards for a successful social media campaign. So, Catherine, um, do you want to talk about I don't want to guess. Okay. And I think everybody's hungry. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, um, it, actually the, 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 the summary uh, is actually based on the, the video I was supposed to show you, but it's okay. Uh, the first one is that social media plays an integral role in the mar overall marketing mix. I have seen it in across the board in, you know, in the cons lines uh, categories. And secondly, content is keen, especially in the social media era. So great contents will be amplified on, on social media. And third, you know, it's, it's re really making us marketers really painful because anything can happen on every minute on social media. So the marketing team just has to be 24-7 re responsive. And if you want a, want a really big impact, then you need to seek a, a, in, a engagement idea that is deeply integrated with the media platform. And being social equals being mobile because all the social apps are actually driving the users to spend more time on mobile. So that's it for our session. Thank, Thank you. you.